We are inviting you for a great miracle crusade. Jesus will turn your life around and will meet you at the point of all your needs. Is this a church marketing or evangelism? This is evangelism, sir. Jesus is calling you today. He will bless you in this crusade. Do you really know him? Yes, I know him. Jesus is my Lord and Savior. As you are? As wretched as you are? How can you be so wretched and barren of the truth? And you are calling me to be like you. You said you know him. Where is Jesus in any way in your life? This is blasphemy. You are naked. Stop reproaching the church. We are not a reproach to the church. The way we dress has nothing to do with our salvation. Once you are saved, you are forever saved. You have been deceived. Seek Jesus. Seek his true salvation. We know him. He died for us. And his blood has atoned our sin. You are the one that needs salvation. You don't have the right to condemn who God hasn't condemned. This is even your sin. I am not condemning you. I am correcting you. I am telling you the truth you should know. He that said he abided in him, ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. According to 1 John chapter 1 verse 6, it says, If we say we have fellowship with him, and we walk in darkness, we lie, and do not the truth. Now, I want the three of you to answer me. Did Christ go about preaching the gospel with his naked body? Did any of his disciples did so? Even the women that received his word and followed him. Did you hear that any of them were brandishing their naked bodies while following him? We are saved! One saved! It's forever saved! There's a line that is drawn by rejecting our Lord Where the call of his spirit is lost and you hurry along with the pleasure my throng have you counted have you counted the cost have you counted the cost if your soul should, should be lost i skin the whole world for you You may bet how your hope of eternity is more for a moment. Mommy, of good afternoon, joy. Ma. Mommy, Jesus is passing your way and he has need of you. Why are you shedding tears, Mommy? I'm shedding tears because you have been deceived. How? I can see your zeal for the Lord, yes. but you are not with the truth. Now I ask you, looking at yourself in all your appearance, can you sincerely say you are born again? I am born again. I know I'm saved. Before you came to the Lord, how was your dressing and your appearance? I didn't change anything. This is the same way I used to dress. That is why I am shedding tears. Huh. Because you've been denied the saving truth. The transforming truth that sets free is not with you. Otherwise, how can you be in this sensual and lascivious thing that exposes your nakedness? And without shamefacedness, you are calling people to come to Jesus. When you have not first given your life to him, I am not naked. If there's anything wrong with my dressing, my pastor would have told me so. So I am not naked. I have given my life to Jesus and I have conviction inside me that I'm saved. So don't, don't condemn me. Uh -uh. There's a line that is drawn by rejecting our Lord. Where the call of his spirit is lost And you hurry along With the pleasure my throng Have you counted? Have you counted the cost? Have you counted the cost? If you saw should you be lost Or you the whole world for you Who is that? Come in, come in Good afternoon, sir. Sister, please, have a seat. Thank you very much. God bless you. Yes, How are you? Fine, sir. Very fine. You are the follow-up and evangelism team leader for which group? Group 2, sir. That's good. How is your mission coming and uh, hope souls are responding to the call? Yes, Pastor. We've indeed come up with a good list of right and ready souls. Awesome. We are going to follow them up. Very good. 
But pastor, there are some challenges we face anytime we go out for evangelism. So many people are offended with the way we are dressing. They are condemning us for not doing the right thing. Some people will not even collect our tracts, neither say a word with, to us. But we see a million words with their eyes going up and down over us. It is only the young people that joyfully collect our tracts and invitation from us. And they are the majority that are coming to our church. Pastor, today, a woman actually wept when she saw us. I noticed her on time, then I decided by myself to go and invite her for the crusade. When I got there and invited her for the crusade, her tears dropped more. Then I asked her, why are you shedding tears, mommy? Then she told me that she's shedding tears because I have been deceived. Then I asked her how. And she told me that she can see my zeal for the Lord, but I'm not with the truth. That looking at myself in all my appearances, can I truly say I'm born again? I told her that I'm born again. Then she now told me that, that before I became born again and now, how do I compare my dressing? I thought that I didn't change anything. That is the same way I used to dress. That there is no difference. Then she told me that is why she's shedding tears for me. Because she knows that there is something wrong inside. First of when I felt that she was condemning me, I quickly told her that she has no right to judge or condemn me. I left her and I walked away. But Pastor, why are most people offended when they see us? Sister, please. This is not a new experience. We have been encountering people and their comments every time we go out to do the work of the Lord. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 10 verse 14, And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when ye depart out of that house or out of that city, shake the dust off your feet, your knicker, your trouser, your spaghetti top, your bum shot, whatever it is you put on your body is not capable of taking you to hell, my dear. Look around the whole world. Look at the mega churches God is using to wrought great and mighty miracles, liberations, blessing people everywhere in the world. Look at what they are wearing. Is it different from what we allow you to wear in this church? Ignore them, my dear. Ignore them. And focus on evangelism. That is where the blessing is. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. God bless you, sister. Please. Much. It is well. Know, God bless you. Good day, Ma. Good day, Ma. Yes. Mommy, I was the one you admonished the other day we came out here for evangelism. I don't know if you remember me, Ma. Ah, <laughs> my daughter. Yes, Ma. God bless you. Amen, Ma. But you have really changed. Yes, mommy. I don't know if you have some time for me. Okay. I would like to ask you some questions that become burdens in my heart. There's no problem. Why not? Come inside. Thank you very Come much. Inside. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Let's go inside. I thank God for your questions. Yes, ma'am. I thank God because they are coming from a heart that is thirsty and willing to drink from the water of life. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 12, For we dare not make ourselves of the number, or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. To compare ourselves with contemporary standards and lives of believers around us shows that we are yet without proper understanding of the scriptures. It is wrong for your pastor to use the big churches or mega churches with their multitudes as an example of the church Christ died for. If we don't understand the meaning of being born again, then we might continue with error in apostate churches until eternity suddenly comes to us. This is the strategy of the devil. This thing called new birth is not bad for the flesh. It happens on the inside of the man. Psalm 51 verse 5 says, Behold, I was shaping in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Sin is in the nature. Sin is in the heart. Sin is in the spirit of man. As we are born into this world, the nature is sinful. The inner man is sinful. That is why the psalmist says, I was shaping in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. 
Verse 6 says, Thou desires truth in the inward part, and in the hidden part you will make me to know wisdom. Man looks at the outward appearance, how tall you are, how bulky you are, how courageous you are. He looks at the complexion of your skin, but God looks at the heart. It is that heart that needs to be born again. It is that spirit that needs to be born again. It is the inner man that needs to be born again. It is that nature we brought into this world. The nature that sins. The nature that is weak. The nature that is fleshly and immoral. That is the one that needs to be renewed and reborn. When the psalmist says, Purge me. The me is the inner man. The me is the spirit within. The me is the real you. The me that dictates my actions. The me that dictates my thoughts. The me that dictates the direction that I go. The psalmist was saying, that's me. Purge me with high soap and I shall be clean. When God answered that prayer and David comes out, will his skin be whiter? No, it is not the skin. It is not the flesh. Verse 10 says, create in me a clean heart. How do I know that my heart is unclean? My thoughts are unclean. My imaginations are unclean. Because everything on the inside and the voice I'm hearing on the inside is telling and pushing me to do some unclean things. Creating me a clean heart. This should be the prayer of every man that hungers and thirsts for the Spirit of God. This should be the prayer of every man who has known the will of God and little backslide like David. This should be the prayer of every preacher and pastor calling sinners to conversion and yet themselves are not converted. Then I will teach sinners your ways and transgressors shall be converted unto you. David did not say because I am king I will teach. He did not say because I am eloquent and charismatic I will teach. No, he first of all recognized the condition of his heart. That sinful nature that had brought him down and separated him from God. He recognized that as a sinner, there is a process he must go through to reconcile with God. As a backslider, there is a process he must go through to be restored back to God. As one who wants to serve the Lord and teach sinners the ways of God. There is a process he must go through before he can teach. David identified that process. He determined to go through that process. And he went through it to reconcile with God. This has been born again. When you were born again, what changed? Your thoughts changed from the inside. Your spirit changed from the inside. Your conduct, your fashion, your dressing changed from the inside. When you are born again, you will not be conformed to this world. You will present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable one to God. You will know the truth. You will not be tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. When you are born again, your conscience will be alive. Like Adam, you will know when you are naked. You will tremble at the word of God when it comes to search you out. You will hide yourself in tears because your eyes have been opened to see your nakedness, your lust, your uncleanliness, your immorality. Your eyes have been opened to see the skimpy things you attach to your body and cold clothes. Things that are worse than the apron Adam made for themselves. The Bible says in Genesis 3 verse 7, And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they made fig leaves together, and made aprons for themselves. The New King James Version calls it covering. And what does it mean? A giddle or leon clothes. One version says they made themselves leon coverings. And another version says they covered themselves around the hips. And when they had the voice of the Lord God, Adam and his wife hid themselves. And Adam answered the Lord, I was afraid and I hid myself because I was naked. Adam understood that they were not appropriately covered with the apron. He knew that they were yet naked with the apron. But the modern Christians are not so. They are not afraid of God and his words anymore. They argue they are not naked in the skimpy and sleeveless tops that exposes their breasts. 
They argue they are not naked in the hot minutes the court to show their underpants. They argue they are not naked in the bum shorts, the leggings, the trousers that exposes and x-rays their flesh lustfully. They argue they are not naked because their pastor says they are okay. But when the change happens on the inside, when the conversion happens on the inside, it will manifest. Your neighbors will see it and know that something has happened in your life. God will see it and show you mercy because in sorrows and in tears, you will hide yourself in prayers. God showed mercy to Adam and his wife. And the Lord God provided them the right garment that is pleasing in his sight. In verse 21, the Bible says, And unto Adam and his wife also, the Lord made coat of skins and clothed them. Coat of skin is like a loose piece of clothing covering the body down to the ankle. A long shirt-like garment, a robe. It is considered nakedness when one uncovers the ties. So in order to be appropriately covered, a garment should start at the shoulder and go down to the ankle. They made themselves leon coverings, but God made ropes and clothed them. Thank you so much, ma. I'm so grateful. Thank you, ma. Thank you. Just give me your hands. Let me pray for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Our Father and our God will bless your name. Well, thank you for this life. I thank you for the transformation that has taken place in her life. We say to you, be all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. I must needs go home by the way of the cross. There's no other way but this. I'm coming. I shall near get sight of the gates of light. Eat the way. Ah, what's up? Good afternoon, sir. How are you? Good afternoon, sir. Welcome. How is everything? What do I offer you, sir? Ah, sister, please sit down. I have come for something much more important. Okay, sir. Yeah. You have not been coming to church for the past two weeks. And uh, it has been of uh, very much concern to me. I sent Sister Grace to come and check up on you. I think last week. And she came back to say you were in good health. So, Sister Peace, why have you not been coming to church? I had an encounter with the Holy Spirit, Pastor. Do you remember when I came to you to ask you some questions that bothered me concerning the sexy lifestyle and fashion the church allows its members to live on? And how people mourn and weep over us whenever we go out for evangelism? Mm -hmm. You told me that you allow the sexy lifestyle and fashion in the church because they are not capable of sending anyone to hell. That is true. Pastor, I was troubled after you assured me that my sensual and immoral dressing will not take me to hell. The Holy Spirit did not leave me alone. He dragged me down to that woman who was weeping and mourning over me. She took me aside and expounded the book, the gospel to me. She told me the meaning of being born again. She told me that being born again is not a merit declaration of perception. She told me that being born again is a transformation and must go through for us to enter the kingdom of God. That that transformation is the conversion of my heart. That is my heart that needs to be born again. She told me that the real me is the nature I brought into the world. The nature that sins, the nature that is weak, that nature that is fleshy and immoral. She told me that the me is the inner man, the spirit within that dictates my action, that dictates my thoughts, that dictates the direction I go. To do the things I would not, but the things I would, I do not. That is that me that needs to be renewed, that needs to be reborn, that needs to be converted. What is conversion, Pastor? Conversion means when somebody is a sinner, he's of the flesh, and now he's to be of the spirit. The process that takes that person from the flesh to the spirit, that is conversion, Pastor. That is being born again. The Bible says in 1 John 3, verse 8, He that committed sin is of the devil. For you told me, Pastor, that once we confess Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we are forever saved. But Jesus said in Matthew.
justified best friend's aid. But I see unto you, whosoever looketh unto a woman to lust after her, has committed adultery already with her in his heart. Meaning that each time I thought to have sex and lust after it, I have committed the sin. How much more when I lay down my body in masturbation and abuse it with all uncleanliness? We should say it's not a sin. Now I ask you, Pastor, whose word should I take? The word of Jesus or your word? Pastor, I have received the truth you never told me. The truth that sets me free from the praises and dances in the church without life. The truth that sets me free from the joy and laughter I receive from great comedians who grace our worship service when my soul was weeping. Pastor, I have received the truth. The truth that sets me free from the miracles, signs and wonders without the transformation of life and spirit. Pastor, you almost sent me to hell. You almost sent me to hell, Pastor. Uh, well, Sister Peace, yes, if that is how you see it, it's okay. But I still strongly believe that once you are saved, you are forever saved. All these things you have mentioned, they don't matter in the church anymore. But if that's how you see it, no problem. Good. I must need to go home by the way